Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about CloudFront. All right. So CloudFront is basically a way for you guys to do what's called a global distribution of whatever content you have available to you. All right, so CloudFront is a really nice way of just getting a global part of a content distribution network that you don't have to build on your own. All right, you can basically build it once wherever your home origin is, and then it will take and copy just about everything you need to have copied off to all the data centers that there are in Cloudland. All right, so you just click on CloudFront. So if you go back up to main services, and you click on CloudFront. So this is just a content delivery network for the entire Hakan world. Right? If you click on create distribution, right, you can make two different kinds. Right? You can have stuff that people download or you can have streaming media. So if you wanted to open up something like CC Mixter, which is a streaming music site for new and upcoming bands right, or, or any of the other kind of band sites or things like that, you can actually make a streaming media site for this. If you have static content like images or movies that they actually download, you can set it up however you want to. How you set it up here defines your entire cloud front. If you're only going to let customers download, then leave it at download. But if you're going to want to stream media at any time, you're going to want to make sure that you choose streaming as it. Right? Most people are going to choose streaming for their content delivery. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a streaming media and then it's going to want the media files that are in your S3 bucket. Right? So you already have the video that you converted over right, into your S3 bucket. So if you click on streaming and you go continue, origin domain name, right? If you push down on that, you can say which one it's going to be. So I want to use CF test static. So this is my origin domain name. Do we want to restrict bucket access, right? If we restrict access, we always want to make sure that they content using CloudFront URLs and not Amazon S3. This is absolutely honking huge. If you do not want people to bypass restrictions that you put in place, then yes, you do want to restrict their access only to CloudFront, right? Because they can also come through your static server on your S3 bucket if you set it up as a, as a web service, right? But we only want to make sure that people that are using CloudFront URLs can come through, right? Do we want to create a new identity for this, right? Do we require that users always access your Amazon S3 using CloudFront URLs? You assign a special CloudFront user as an origin access identity, right? The only problem is that you've got to program that up, right, when you're doing this, right? So if you want to create or reuse an existing identity, then you can do that. But if we do, right, we can just use an existing or create a new identity. It's kind of up to you. Right? So if we use a new one, our pre-existing, if we don't have any, right, we can create a new one, access identity, right, because that's my bucket name, CF test, so I know where it came from. Do we want to have this thing update your bucket policy automatically for you? Right? This if you say yes, it will do it and it will be great. If you say no, then you need to understand bucket policies a whole lot more. Right? Price class. Right, all edge locations, and that is everywhere. That includes South America, right? This is everywhere but Antarctica, where there's a data center. So if you say all edge locations, then you're going to get a lot of coverage globally, right? If you only say U.S., Europe, and Asia, then it's only going to go there if you just say U.S. and Asia or U.S. and Europe. That's the only place it's going to hang out. So I usually just use all ed, um, edge locations. An alternative domain. If you want to use something other than the CloudFront domain name, if you have a domain that you've bought and you've set up Route 53, which we haven't done yet, right? you can actually specify a, a specialized domain for this bucket or for this process. You always want logging on. The bucket for logs can be any bucket that you want it to be. Right, but you definitely always want logging on. Right, log prefix, I'll always use something at like CloudFront, CDN, right, so I know where it came from. Right, so these prefixes can be really huge in helping you figure out where problems started and where they didn't. And then what we can do is we can say Dan's CloudFront distro for my two movies. All right, and then if you want to hold off on actually getting this thing up and running, you can say disabled if you want to have someone come through and take a look at it. We'll just go ahead and create enabled. 
and then we can create a distribution. All right, and then it will go, okay, here's what we got, All right? Next steps. There are things that we can do if you want to. All right, grant read permissions, we did all that. Uh, if they want to use signed URLs, we can do that, All right? But we're not going to in this case. CloudFront key pairs, if we have trusted partners or trading partners and we want them to be able to upload their own content and distribute it globally. So if I was running a training course, you know, like MIT or Stanford, I could actually give stuff over to my trusted trading partners and have them do stuff for education and throw up videos and all the rest of it as they wanted to. It's sort of like how YouTube works. You have to log in to upload a video. It's that same kind of concept, right? Write code that generates signed URLs. Typically, no, we're not gonna play around with programming. Right, at least not on this part. And then add trusted signers. Um, because we don't really have any and we're doing this kind of on our own, we're in pretty good shape on this one. Right? So no real next steps. So what will end up happening is that there's a whole bunch of people that just went ahead and did their thing. And we have people that did, come on, open up. So we have people that did some download here, right? But this URL right here, is your main cloud front URL. So your origin is your box, and then your domain name is how you worked within CloudFront to get there, right? If you go in, and let's go ahead. Charles, do you mind if I play around with your bucket here for a minute? You can actually go into the distribution settings, right? And you can see what the domain name is for that. This is what you'd use to program up if you were delivering content over the internet. You can use this domain name, the origin access identity, that is who you are. That's who's given it all the permissions on it. The origin bucket is the one we don't want people to know about. So we basically make an alias in DNS so that Charlie Yuen S3 Amazon actually looks like this in CloudFront.net. And the way we set up our box, right, was that if they try to access it through this, they cannot. They can only access it through this. And then that's the process. If you make a boo-boo, you can always go back and edit it later on, right? So let's say we wanted to change it from one point to another point, or we wanted to change the identity or anything else like that, right? So let's say we made a boo-boo and we wanted to let Amazon do that, right? Update bucket policy. Then we can just go ahead and say, yeah, and we're done. And it will go back and fix all of that for the rest of it. Okay, which one was yours? So it's still in progress, so it's right now going over and taking your movie and making sure it's in all the data centers across Amazon's framework, right? You chose streaming, Nate's Cloud Okay. Alright. We have failed. You have to manually update your permissions. Okay. Okay. And if you have to go in, that's cool. That means it wasn't able to do it because you may not have had the right permissions to actually go in. So you have to do it manually. Right. And it's basically just leave everyone as read so that people can actually read off your bucket and then you're pretty well good to go. But that's essentially how you create a global content distribution network across the planet. How do you feel about that? You're now famous in multiple locations, not just here. <laughs> that means people in Brazil can watch your videos now. You're going to see things exploding. All right. When you're done with it, right? All you've got to do is just hit disable, and then you get, yeah, you can just disable it, and it will go, and it will take up to 15 minutes to go ahead and close this thing out, right? So when it's all done, and then it's gone off, and then you're in pretty much so good shape once you've got that. Huh? If you click on the one that you want, I've got to go pull up, let's pull up Andrews this time. Uh, I need one that's actually enabled. Oh, did everybody shut theirs down? Mine's enabled now. All right. What you do is you click the one you want, and you just click on distribution settings, and that will let you go and flip through all this to change things that you may have done. All right. If you want to move on different pipes, if you want to do all sorts of different things, you can go in here and create different kinds of things that you wanted to do with it. Right? HTTP. 
but it's really kind of rote on how you do it through the front end. If you're actually using the API to access this, there's a whole lot of other things you can do to go along with it. But this is essentially how you distribute content globally across the board. Right? And the good part is that it's basically you're only paying for a cloud front per se. You're not necessarily paying to have your objects stored globally across the planet. Right? But the idea is if you're in a content distribution, if you're Netflix or if you're Disney or if you're HBO and you want your stuff globally accessible and reachable, this is a really quick and dirty, cheap, easy content distribution network that is tons cheaper than Akamai or some of the other content distribution networks that you'll have out there. You'll notice that Facebook, when they go through and they do their content distribution, there's a Facebook CDN that's actually owned and operated by Facebook, but then they also use Akamai as well to make sure that everything's balanced off nice to handle peaks and valleys across the way. So if Facebook CDN gets too bogged down, they'll automatically fail over to, Ak to Akamai. Right. So these content distribution networks are really kind of important, especially if you're delivering audio, video, pictures, large objects, and all the rest of it. You can literally host your website and your content globally, and everyone gets a really nice quality of service across the, the road. Instead of having that poor person in Tokyo having to access a server in Virginia, they'll actually be accessing a server in Tokyo, and that just speeds up that quality of service for those customers. So it kind of makes sense? How do you guys feel about CloudFront? DIY content delivery networks. I can't access my website. It's because we haven't made a website yet. Oh, so I was just going to ask how do we access the website. We just, yeah. got, we just got a URL for CloudFront. You did, so but you have nothing to back it up okay. with, yeah. right? So it kind of makes sense? All right, so you know what the story is. Wrote, make CloudFront, delete a CloudFront, make CloudFront, delete a CloudFront. Do this until you are so absolutely comfortable with CloudFront that when I ask you to do this attached to a WordPress site, you guys are going to know exactly how much fun you're going to have. Yay. All right? So get really comfortable with this. Yay. Any, what you got, Dan? You can. And we're going to do a little bit of that here in, in a little bit. There's some things you need to do to make it work. But no, S3 as a bucket will not work with with S3, and, it's, and it specifically states that in S3. S3 is for static content. So if you have an HTML page, right, it will work specifically with that. For active content, we need to do something a little bit different. So it makes sense? Any other questions? Are we good? All right, go make distributions. Have fun.